This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, June the 8th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in, and let's get right to the weather. We've got a challenging forecast ahead. There's a look at the SkyCam network from the Alpha SkyCam network at ABC 3340, and we're looking at Birmingham and a beautiful sunrise this morning. Another beautiful sunrise over Tuscaloosa with some high cirrus clouds left over from the precipitation that occurred and the thunderstorms that occurred last night. It was an active night last night as we continued to see a rather moist atmosphere over the southeastern United States. Uh, we have a little disturbance that has been moving through the flow, and we've got another disturbance coming in the upper atmosphere. The uh, high has been uh, uh, displaced a little further to the south, and that's allowing these little disturbances to have their impact a little further into Alabama as they move through the generally west to east kind of flow. Temperatures this morning starting off in the upper 60s. Uh, once again, thanks to the cool uh, rain that came with the thunderstorms, temperatures dropped uh, fairly nicely. The rain that moved through last night is gone. It's uh, a mere shadow of itself down along the southeast coast of the U.S. But in the meantime, we're watching uh, additional development out in Oklahoma and Arkansas with those large clusters. Those large clusters are responsible for a number of flash flood watches that are in effect with the possibility of heavy rains. And you can see from the QPF chart that indeed uh, rainfall on the order of uh, from about three to five inches is possible across parts of Oklahoma, North Texas, and uh, much of Arkansas. For us, it looks like once again, another round of thunderstorms will produce probably on the order of anywhere from a half to one and a half inches of precipitation. There's possibility uh, with the heavy rain that we might see some isolated flash flooding. Storm Prediction Center is out looking a large area that looks sort of like uh, the head of a duck, doesn't it? I don't know. It's kind of, you know, looking for images in clouds. Why not images in the diagrams, too? But uh, the duck's bill certainly extends across uh, into west central Alabama and a good portion of central Alabama. So uh, we expect, once again, another round of thunderstorms uh, later this afternoon into the evening hours, mainly from about 3 p.m. to midnight that uh, could produce some damaging wind, large hail, and potentially um, uh, heavy rain with flash flooding a possibility. Slight risk area shrinks a little bit and um, doesn't look like a duck on day two. And uh, it, it uh, shrinks back into primarily uh, east Texas, parts of Arkansas and northern Louisiana. Day three, there's no specific slight uh, risk area, but there is a number of sea texts over the southeastern U.S., as we remain in a very moist and unstable air mass where uh, we're going to basically expect showers every day. The tropical activity is much uh, down now. Uh, that little area of uh, uh, disturbed weather that was in the southwest Gulf of Mexico has moved into Mexico, still causing some problems for those folks down there. All right, let's take a look at some uh, modeling this morning. And first of all, we want to look at... Uh, some uh, specific parameters for today, and these are the, the CAPE values uh, at uh, uh, about uh, 7 p.m. this evening, and you can see the CAPE values uh, basically pretty high in a line, uh, generally uh, along an area from about uh, Dothan uh, back up into northern Louisiana, and uh, so it looks like basically from about the I-20 corridor, uh, kind of the east-west, if you draw a line along east-west from Anniston and extended it through Birmingham and back all the way to the west, uh, to the south is where the area is going to be the greatest. Uh, precipitable water is very high. We're uh, looking at values once again around 7 p.m., and the values are over an inch and a half uh, and in some places approaching two inches. And uh, the good news here, if there is any good news with all of this, is that the shear values are down. So while I do expect to see a severe thunderstorm watch in place sometime this afternoon for our area, um, I doubt that it will be a tornado watch. Uh, we can't rule tornadoes out completely, but uh, the threat based on shear seems to be pretty low. Let's look at uh, GFS modeling and uh, the culprit has been <clears throat> and continues to be this little disturbance we see coming across Arkansas the, this afternoon. And uh, that disturbance moves off very quickly, but it is replaced Monday with <clears throat> a closed low that uh, comes into the uh, Oklahoma, Kansas area. And that uh, closed low, of course, is going to be responsible for a good deal of showers and thunderstorms. Now, let's back up just a second here and uh, going to go to the high res NAM. And uh, this is uh, the forecast for this afternoon um, around uh, 7 p.m. <clears throat> and once again, we see the possibility of, of some scattered development. But the main cluster of th uh, thunderstorms is uh, just off to the west. And then the uh, uh, high res NAM by uh, about 1 a.m., uh, indicating a couple of 
clusters of thunderstorms. Now, whether it'll actually be take this shape or be just one big cluster, it's hard to say for sure. Uh, but that certainly is what it looks like we will be experiencing. Now, getting back to our uh, regular forecast on the GFS, this is Tuesday. The closed low is going to be there. So while Monday looks like it'll probably be a little bit of a reduced day for showers, it still looks like the possibility of scattered showers. The low inches so much closer on uh, Tuesday that uh, we expect uh, to see a pretty good closed uh, surface low over Missouri uh, with what appears to be a little bit of a front, though we're not going to get a real substantial air mass change, so don't let the presence of that front really uh, throw you there. The closed low continues to be a closed low as it approaches Chicago on Wednesday, so this could be another fairly good day for showers and thunderstorms across the southeastern United States. Uh, I don't think the GFS is quite as bullish as it ought to be on the amount of showers and thunderstorms. By the time we get out to 108 hours, this is Thursday, the 12th, we're still dealing with this weakness that's been in here. And the, the major closed low is now an open wave approaching the eastern Great Lakes area. But you can see that there's still uh, over Missouri a bit of a short wave in there. And interesting to note that um, uh, if we look at the European, the European, um, the, and, and these times, remember, the European is about uh, six hours off from this, but the European uh, in pretty good agreement with the overall pattern of this closed low coming out. Uh, but after that, the European and the GFS certainly differ in uh, the model uh, choices. So that would certainly suggest uh, for Thursday <clears throat> that we stay unsettled, and that would mean, uh, of course, uh, once again, scattered showers and thunderstorms. The pattern uh, doesn't change a great deal on Friday. Uh, the westerlies a little further to the north, but we're still in this weakness. So there's an overall kind of troughiness over the eastern half of the country. And so once again, what does that mean? Well, it means we're going to have to deal with showers. So can't exactly uh, put uh, those uh, showers to bed just yet. By Saturday, uh, we see the ridge beginning to nose in in response to that trough coming into the northwest uh, United States. I mean, the ridge noses a little bit stronger on Sunday. However, with all this happening, some interesting things happen in voodoo country. As you can see, there's a bit of a weakness over the tropics. We get out to Tuesday the 17th. The GFS is developing a fairly uh, significant low, upper low, over the southern Gulf of Mexico. And by the time we get out to the 21st of June, we can see that it has a significant closed low uh, in the vicinity of Mobile, uh, New Orleans area. And if we look at the surface chart for that time, of course, we're in voodoo country. You can see that it certainly has a representative uh, surface low in the vicinity of the central Gulf Coast. Now, is this Arthur? Uh, or is this gone tomorrow? <laughs> it's, you know, the, the fun about uh, voodoo country is just being able to speculate. So when we do get out to the very end of the period at 384 hours, uh, this is uh, early on uh, Tuesday morning, uh, the 24th of June, we basically see that the GFS continues to signal a bit of a, a trough um, replacement over the eastern half of the country, which would certainly keep the heat down. Well, thanks for tuning into the Weather Extreme video. Expect uh, James Spann will be back in the saddle with the next edition first thing on Monday morning. In the meantime, stay tuned to the Alabama Weather Blog for the latest weather information. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day and Godspeed. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham.